my book, Loving Life, All of It, A Walk with Cancer, Compassion, and Consciousness. And we are in the middle of the section called Reflections. The next section, Playing with Intention. The concept of playing with intention was becoming a topic of conversation within emerging sound healing groups and organizations around the country as more artists were creating and producing CDs to elicit specific results to reduce stress, open chakras, and train brain waves, induce sleep, and harmonize with the universe. Intention, by definition, is having a predetermined purpose in mind. I knew my intention when recording the new love CD was to help my father relax and heal after surgery which it did successfully, but I didn't understand why others were having such a profound experience with the music as well. I felt as if I was digging into the essence of the music. Questions without answers filled my mind. What were the composers of these pieces thinking and feeling when they wrote the music? What inspired them? I knew these answers were critical if I wanted to understand this idea of intention. I needed to get underneath the notes into the initial feelings and passion that inspired their creation. I was facing my fear head on as I realized I would never have those answers unless I opened myself up to the experience of expressing my own music. Learning the language of music. As a classically trained musician, most of my experiences of playing without music were either associated with memorization or improvisation both of which produced stressful situations in which my performance was directly assessed by someone else, a teacher, a contest judge, conductor, other musicians, or an audience. My limited experience with improvisation consisted of a couple years playing piano in a school jazz band. I loved the rhythmic syncopation of the music, but never felt confident with the music theory part. Knowing the chord structures, how the chords modulated into each other, or which voicing to use. The fear of thinking I didn't know enough theory to improvise kept me dependent upon written music. Thanks to my wonderful classical training, I did have the strong foundation and technical ability to play almost anything I desired to play, as long as, as I could find and read the printed music. In the early 1990s, I performed frequently with a phenomenal group of women who felt more like soul sisters than professional colleagues. We named our quartet the Emerald Star Ensemble. The harp, flute, violin, and cello are voices. The music we created was magical, and we explored different types of genres, Baroque, Irish, classical, contemporary, jazz, always playing with our own twist and unique interpretations. Michelle, our violinist, was a natural at playing jazz and could go off into a riff regardless of what genre we were playing. Kathy and Natasha and I 
all desired to play with that type of freedom. One day, we decided to get together and step into the world of improvisation our way. We imagined ourselves at a dinner party where we were having conversations, literally using our instruments as our voices. As the conversation turned toward me, I froze in fear and could barely play two notes. It was a life-changing experience for me to feel that type of paralyzing fear, even though I was with dear friends who were there supporting and encouraging me to let go and step one note at a time into this unfamiliar territory. My mind simply could not let go of the word improvisation. I was spinning in the belief of how could I improvise when I don't know the theory? Which wasn't even true because I earned all A's in my music theory classes. Questions, judgments, and excuses filled my thoughts. What if I play the wrong notes? What if it doesn't sound good? What will others think? I don't know what I'm doing. My aha moment came several months later during a conversation with an architect who loved to sing in a community chorus. He reminded me that music is a language. Music is a language. That simple yet profound idea rocked my world as I reflected on how infants learn to speak. We all begin by playing with sounds. Ah, ma, da, ooh. Then expand those sounds into words, gradually stringing words together. We communicate our feelings through simple sentences. After several years, we attend school where we learn the theory of our language or rules of proper grammar. The idea was life-changing as I complete, uh, compassionately perceived myself as an infant learning to communicate through a new language. It wasn't important to know the theory or chord structure of the music. It was more important to feel the feelings that were expressing through the music. This was a very personal and profound shift in perspective. Sharing music from the inside rather than performing music for the outside. I began what I called doodling on the harp. As an artist doodles on a canvas, freely drawing and expressing without any thought, I started playing without printed music, allowing the energy of my feelings to express through the strings of the harp without worrying about any of the rules from music theory class. The notes were simple, the melodies childlike, yet I could feel a fullness within the sound that touched my heart. It didn't matter what notes I played. What mattered were the feelings flowing through the notes. It took a while to get out of my head and into my heart, but as I became more comfortable doodling, the music felt as if it was coming to life. My initial fears of not knowing enough theory to write my own music transformed into trusting the flow of music that was coming through my fingers. Playing music in this way, doodling without intention or attachment to an outcome 
felt free, natural, and pure of thought. I soon envisioned music as a sound highway on which information travels. Rather, whether it is intention created from the mind or feelings from the heart. This visualization soon expanded into the musician being a hollow channel through which music flows. As the hollow bone, as some refer to this visualization, my intention was to be open and willing to express the love flowing through my heart and soul without any attachment or preconceived intention as to how others perceived or received the music. So we'll conclude there with this video and I'll pick it up in the next one. Again, I'm reading from the book, Loving Life, All of It, A Walk with Cancer, Compassion and Consciousness. And we're in the middle of the reflections section. I'll see you next time.